So we have here admonitions for the season of Lent, that we may know why are we why are we sacrificing and doing penance? What is the purpose? Brethren, be imitators of God as very dear children and walk in love, as Christ also loved us and delivered himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. We need to be closer imitators of Christ. And we know his life. Let us know it in greater detail. Let us study it. And so we have the season of Lent for us to grow closer in our imitation of Christ. That we can walk in love. That we can seek each other's goodness. Seek our own goodness. And our own goodness relies in the diminishing of our, our self-want, our self-will, love of self. And so we have the season of Lent to fight against that. We have the season of Lent diminishing our physical needs and our physical wants. As I've said before, so that the Spirit can be freed, so that the Spirit can ascend more readily to this imitation of Christ. So, St. Paul admonishes us, do not then become partakers with the children of disobedience. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk then as children of the light. How do these children walk? They suffer all things in union with Christ. They see everything in the world about them as a gift of divine providence. So let us walk about seeing it in this light. That God has provided for us all these things, all these circumstances, all these situations for our benefit. He always gives you what you need and never more than you can bear. And so we have the season of Lent for that purpose. That we may grow in imitation of our Lord. But let us take heed lest after Lent when the unclean spirit has gone out of a man and he comes back to his house and enters and dwells in and finds it more swept and seven, uh, seven spirits more evil than himself enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man becomes worse than the first. So let us take heed, lest these advances we make in this season of Lent avail us nothing. As they speak of the spiritual life, we need also to end well. We need to, to begin well and continue and persevere, but most importantly, we need to end well. Because as a ship that has gone about collecting goods, trading and uh, different things, and has all these goods to come home to harbor and sinks in the harbor, it doesn't matter. It will lose everything. And so it's very important for us to see the goal. The true goal of Lent is union with Christ, is imitation of Christ, spiritual growth. And so how can we, how can we focus on this? One very beautiful devotion is the Stations of the Cross. As I've said before, the Stations of the Cross is plenary indulgence, totius quotius, meaning each time you do the Stations, you gain plenary, plenary indulgence. And so, I would go over just 
the, the last few stations, beginning with the, the eighth station. They show the truth that we need to focus on union with Christ and his suffering. And they show the truth of our state. It begins with the eighth station, weep not for me, but weep for your children. Weep for those who are ignorant of their state in life. Ignorant of the state of their soul, who don't focus on it. Who don't, who don't take part in, who don't think about the fact that there's a spiritual battle, that there's a spiritual life that they're living whether they take part or not. And so these, these tears that we have for our sins, that we have for the sins of nations, they beg for a change. A change of what? Well, we know our state. As we come to the ninth station, man has a fallen human nature. We tend to sin. We need to rise above our fallen human state, our fallen nature, to change it. We need to supernaturalize it. Naturally, we're, incl we're inclined to guard and keep what we claim is ours, our possessions. Let go of the things of the world. And so we come to the tenth station. Jesus is stripped of his garments, and we need to strip ourselves of all earthly attachments, especially to our own self. We need to live for Christ. We have been bought and paid for with a great price. We are not our own. Detachment from the things that we want or need in prudence, obviously. With this we create a void in us, an emptiness to be filled by something. So we need an attachment. An attachment to what? In the eleventh station, our Lord is nailed to the cross. This needs to be our attachment. Love of suffering, seeing in it God's will, God's divine providence. He knows you. He knows your fallen human state. He knows the trials of every day that you have to persevere through. And so he sends you these trials, he sends you these sufferings for your benefit, and especially in the season of Lent. If you wish to argue for something or fight to keep something, let it be attachment to your process. Do we ever go out of our way to offer it up? No, we need to see in our sufferings the means to our salvation. This is our goal. The twelfth station. Jesus dies on the cross. This is our true goal. Not to live a million years in this life, not to live forever in this life, but to die here and to go to heaven. To die a good death. A death united to Christ and his cross. And we need to fix this in our minds. <coughs> we need to hold this true. We need to be secured to it as a mentioned the 11th station, nail ourselves to the cross. Let this be the one thing that we do not let go of. So that when we come to the end, we may walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath delivered himself for us, an oblation and a sacrifice to God for an order of sweetness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.